Hello and welcome to our first video here in Higher Maths on our topic Straight Lines. In today's video we are going to be covering the distance between points along a straight line. So we're going to begin today by talking about points on horizontal or vertical lines. Now as you can see in this first diagram we have a line that forms from this point here, which we're calling the coordinates x1 and y1, and a second point here, which we're calling x2 and y2. And we've labeled this line D, and that's because D stands for the distance. It is the distance from this point to this point along the line. Now, when we're talking about distance, we might also refer to it as length. And the reason we do this is because the distance of the line is simply just the length of the line. Now, as we can see here, we have a horizontal line. Now, what do we know about horizontal lines from National 5? Well, we know that because they're not vertical, the Y coordinate will always be the same at any point along this line here. So because of that, we can say for a little fact here that Y1 is going to be equal to Y2. But that's pretty much a given, so we can just ignore that. So because the y coordinate is the same, how can we work out the distance? Well, we say for a horizontal line that the distance, the distance of a horizontal line, and sometimes we say that a horizontal line is parallel to the x-axis, and we say that the distance is the difference in x coordinates. And this is because we can see the distance is simply going to be the value here to the value here. So we say that the distance, and because it's the difference, whenever we're talking about dif difference, we know it's going to be subtract. And because it's the x coordinates, we're going to have x2 subtract x1. Now, whenever we're doing this, we need to make sure that we state that x2 is greater than x1. And this is because if we're talking about the distance of a line, we always want to make sure our first number is greater than the second number. For example, let's say x2 was 3 and x1 was 1. If we're working out the distance from this line, it's just 3 take away 1. So the distance is going to be 2. But if we were to do this the other way around, let's say we did x1 subtract x2, we would have 1 take away 3, which is going to give us negative 2. And negative 2 as a length doesn't make sense, does it? We can't go minus 2 units in length. So we always want to make sure that our first number is going to be greater than the second number. And the same applies for vertical lines. Here we have a vertical line. We can see that this time around the y coordinate is changing. However, the x coordinate is staying the same. So the diff distance is the difference between this y coordinate and this y coordinate. So in this case, we say that the distance of a vertical line is the difference. in y coordinates. So in this case, the distance is going to be equal to y2 subtract y1 again, where y2 is going to be greater than y1, like so. So we've talked about vertical and horizontal lines, but what about when we form a line between two points that doesn't form either of these, as you can see, this line here from these two coordinates, x1, y1 to x2, y2, forms a straight line that is neither horizontal or vertical. Well, we can still work out the distance of this line using what we call the distance formula. And we'll get into that in a wee moment. Now, as you can see, if we take this straight line and we connect them like this, the two points, we can form a right angle triangle. And well, I think you can see where this is going. We're going to be using a bit of Pythagoras if we're using or working with right angle triangles. Now for the vertical side of this, 
uh, the vertical line of this right angled triangle, well, we said that the distance of a vertical line is simply y2, which we can see this point up here is, and this point down here is going to be y1. So the distance is going to be y2 subtract y1, as we've got here. And as we said before, for horizontal lines, the distance is just x2 subtract x1. So that's where these values have come for, uh, from. But what is d? Well, from Pythagoras' theorem, we know that c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. So what is d squared in our case? Well, let's just substitute in the values for a and b. Our a in our case is going to be y2 take away y1 squared, and our b is going to be x2 subtract x1 squared. So how do we work out d? Well, to work out d, we can just take the square root of d squared, but if we do that, we have to do the same to the right-hand side. So we would say that d is going to be equal to the square root of all of this here. So we've got y2 subtract y1 squared plus x2 subtract x1 squared, and it's the square root of all of this. And this here is the value of d. And funnily enough, this right here is also what we call the distance formula. So we'll just quickly write that the distance between, or we'll say the distance d between the points x1, y1 and x2, y2 is given by and it's this formula here and we call this the distance formula. So let's use this formula here to do a couple of examples. In our first example here we are told that a is the point negative 2, 4 and b is the point 3, 1 and we are asked to calculate the length of the line AB. So that would be the line that connects these two points. Now again, immediately we notice we do not have a common point this time. So this time we are going to have to use our distance formula. Now in this case, because we are squaring both terms inside here, we are always going to have a positive value inside these brackets when they are squared, because we know the square of a negative number is always going to be positive. So therefore, we can pick either of these points to be the x1, y1, and the x2, y2. For example, this could be our x1, y1, and this could be our x2, y2, or we could do it vice versa. We could do it the other way around, but I'll just do it this way because that's the way I've got it from left to right. So we'll plug these values into our formula. We know the distance is going to be y2 which is 1 subtract uh, y1 which is 4 squared plus x2 which is 3 and x1 which is minus 2 so it's going to be minus minus 2 all squared and we're going to be doing the square root of all of this. Now we can do this without using a calculator but in future we might want to use a calculator if, if we have one at hand. So we can see this is going to be minus 3, minus 3 squared. Well, we know any negative number squared is just going to be positive. And we are adding 3, oops, 3 plus 2, 5 squared is 25. So it's the square root of 34. And we'll make sure we write units as well as it is a distance. So here's another quick example. We are asked to calculate the distance between this point here and this point here. And again, we're gonna have to use our distance formula to do it this time. So it's always good practice when you're doing the distance formula to write the distance formula out as the first line so you know what you're doing. Now, you might also sometimes see the distance formula written like so. It might be x2 subtract x1 squared plus y2 subtract y1 squared, which as you can see, looks very similar to what I've written up there. And that's because it pretty much is, because we have this plus in the middle, it doesn't matter which way around we put these two brackets. So either one of these two is the correct distance formula. So our distance in this case is going to be 
let's pick this to be our x2. We're going to have minus 1, subtract a half, squared, plus y2 is minus 1 as well, and y1 is minus 15 over 4, so it's going to be plus 15 over 4, all squared, and then we're going to be doing the square root of all of this. Now in this case we're working with a bit of fractions, we did this at National 5, it shouldn't be too difficult to do. We can see uh, inside this bracket here, we can change this minus 1 to be a fraction of 2, so we're going to have negative 2 over 2, which is the same as minus 1, and that's minus a half, all squared, and then on this side we'll do the same here, we'll put it over 4 this time though, so we'll have minus 4 over 4, uh, plus 15 over 4, all squared, and it's going to be the square root of all of this. It's getting quite a, a big square root now, but it's going to simplify when we put these fractions together. So we can see minus 2 uh, over 2, minus 1 over 2, is going to give us minus 3 over 2. And we are squaring this, and we're going to be adding... Let's see, minus 4 plus 15 is going to be 11 over 4. So 11 over 4, all squared. And we're going to be doing the square root of all of this. And all we can do now is just square both the terms in here. And this is going to give us, um, well, we're going to have minus 3 times minus 3 over 4. So it's going to be 9 over 4 plus 11 times 11 is 121 over 4 times 4 is 16, like so. If you need to practice working with fractions again, you can go back and check our previous videos on them, um, if they're out yet. So here we're going to have the square root. We're going to make a common denominator here. So I'm going to make this first fraction over 16 as well. We multiplied the bottom by 4, so we have to do the same for the top. 36 plus 121 over 16, which will say is 36 plus 121, which is 157 over 16. And that is not the simplest form of this because we can rationalize the denominator because this is technically the square root of 157 over the square root of 16, which is of course four. So it's just going to be four. And then we don't know what the square root of 157 is. So we'll just leave it like that. And that is going to be our distance. So again, as you can see, it's not too difficult to use the distance formula. Again, remember, we can uh, change these two things around if we so wish. Uh, but sometimes we might have to be working with a few fractions, which can get a bit tricky. But if you practice on them, it should be very easy to do questions in the exam about distance.